tell? Is this on? But it makes sense. I mean, we're Capricorns. Sign of the goat. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of What's Wrong with Wrestling. I'm Andrew Pisano, along with my brother Joe Pisano and Eric Slamilton Hamilton. Oh, went this way. These guys. Huh? How about we these guys? guys? In yeah. quarantine protocol, which means we're in the three boxes if you're watching on YouTube. So Yes. Yeah. There I'm in go. box number two. Exactly. <laughs> Joe is now the third man of the podcast. Yeah, no, I'm in the bottom box. I third man. Makes third sense. man. <clears throat> Joey no belts. Joey <laughs> <laughs> no belts. Joey, how does it feel to be the only one on the show without any belts? Oh, are we still doing this? The belt thing? Oh. That's a thing. Oh, I thought we uh thought we gave it up. Yes. Well, I um we did, and then I won one, and it's a thing again. It's, it's, it's a thing again. <laughs> Being the legend that I am, since I have the most title reigns, the most, the longest title run, I finally, I did the job. I pushed the younger talent, even though he's older than me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, needed it. he needed it more. <laughs> congrats, to Eric. Uh, yeah, it, it's that. It's not because you completely shit the bed on all your Rumble picks. <laughs> so Eric's Goldberg and you're Bray Wyatt. Basically. You're pushing uh, someone well, over. So, so yeah, yeah. I, had, I had a horrible scorecard. Uh, Eric, you know, beat Joe by two points. They both had a good. good hey, scorecard. Patreon, Patreon like, only. Technically, well, it's known now, but come on. Um, but but does that mean Eric pinned Joe because he had the closer score, or did he pin me because I had such a bad score? It kind of seems like I was like thrown out of the match early. Like both of you put me through a table. I got got carted out, and then let's go with that. Eric rolled up Joe, you know, classic WWE, right? Because it was only two points, so it had to be a roll up. Roll up. A finisher would be like winning by ten. This is um, for sure. This is probably the best scorecard I've ever had and lost. I mean, I got every match correct. Um, Right. I'm like, have I ever picked the Royal Rumble winner? But I've actually picked five out of the last six. I think we all had Becky and Seth, right? Or yeah, someone Seth, picked something yeah. different. Yeah, sure we did that year. Last year, Eric and I had Drew, obviously missed the women's, and then I had both of them this year. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was a great scorecard, but lost by two points to well, yeah, none of us random shit. Scorecard. I mean, you know, there's so many valuable variables in the uh, Rumble matches, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, Eric. Eric won with a roll up. It's confirmed, which means it was a fluke win. We'll see if uh, he can defend <laughs> yeah. his title at the next pay per view. Was that Elimination Chamber? Or Fast Lane? I'm not who fucking knows or cares. Anyways, um, <laughs> we got a lot of patrons this week because it was Royal Rumble. Uh, so I'll go ahead and read the names real quick. Our first name is It Doesn't Matter What My Name Is. So okay. that's a good name. Yeah, pretty huh? good name. Uh, we got Robbie Meredith, CJ Garlato, Mark Saltz, Alex Brock, Nick Godson. Uh, Joe Steamley, Jeffrey Bommel, and Chris Starkey got a year-long sub. So huge oh, shout-out wow. to Chris Starkey. Thank you very much, Chris. Yeah, Boom. thank you. And I'm sure I butchered like a few of these names, so apologies uh, across the board there. Uh, but if you want to be like them, go to patreon.com slash what's wrong with wrestling. We got the Royal Rumble recap that just came out. We have the Wednesday Night War recaps every single week. Yep. And all those brackets, all those movie recaps, all that crazy shit is on there. It's only five yeah. dollars a month. Our latest bracket was uh, best rivalry in best WWE feud slash best rivalry. Feud. We kind of put yeah. both in there, and yeah. it got heated, just like every bracket does. Yes, this one especially though, there was a very, lot of a very controversial ending. Yes, <laughs> I mean Let's they say you can't that. argue opinion, but Let, we certainly do it well. We certainly do. But, you yes. know, controversy it, creates yeah. couch, you know. Uh, one of my favorite guys ever on the mic said that once, and I took that yeah. to heart. Uh, we also have uh, some fans that bought T-shirts. Mm. Uh, I want to thank uh, Rich Prifty, who bought four pizza shirts. Wow. Wow. Wait, was he the swinger, and he bought them for the other swinger couple? And <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think know. he did. I don't Please. know. <laughs> he might have bought four on accident. Um I hope not. No. He did. I don't know. Hey, I want a picture of everybody wearing their pizza shirt in yeah. the throes of it. So you can block <laughs> out the faces if you want. We're not going to yes. publish it. 
But yeah. um, it'll just be for our pleasure. Uh, yes, for your <laughs> pleasure. And make sure you get their feet in there. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, if they're good. We also no, have yeah. uh, Todd Fricker who bought this shirt. Who are you? As well as Trent Chappelle. Who are yeah. you? That's a good Ooh, shirt. Like shirts. Yeah, so okay. uh, thank you very much. And you can buy a t-shirt at prowrestlingtees.com slash what's wrong with wrestling. I think there's a sale going on for the next couple of days. So jump on it now. Um, and he, like, it tells you what the sale yeah. is when you go to the website. So <laughs> it's that easy. A penny right. saved is a penny earned, everybody. Yeah, exactly. Just don't, just don't go to Subway like one day and you're good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, all right, we'll start with SmackDown. This is obviously before the Royal Rumble, so we'll get through it quick. We start off with a Daniel Bryan promo, and he comes out. He's pretending that he can hear the yes chants that are being projected by the production team. And he's uh -huh. so excited for the Rumble because he's never won it, and he finally wants to check that off his bucket list, and he wants to be in the main event of WrestleMania. He doesn't know how many WrestleMania moments he has left. And he thanks Gable and Otis for loosening his hips. So he's ready for anything. And yeah. uh, he really flubbed you know, his lines a lot in this promo. If he hadn't been doing the dumb shit with uh, Otis and Gable the past couple of eight weeks, right. I would have put him on my scorecard to win the Rumble. Yeah. I mean, look, he was in the high betting odds the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, he was like yeah, the favorite. Like, most no way. Week. You can't, like, how a guy that's been butt fucking, like, it makes no sense. Right. So he's cut his promo, but then he's interrupted by AJ Styles with Omas. Wild card! Gonna hit that nice. button a lot. Oh my God. Yeah. So AJ says he's going to win the Rumble, but Daniel asks, What are you doing here? And then AJ holds up the mic to Omas, who says, The Grand Invitational. <laughs> and, and that's uh, bottom where right. <laughs> Who are you? That's where Joe should say, oh, we're still doing this. Yeah. <laughs> oh That's That's still a thing. Like, hello, Rudy. Yeah. <laughs> so Styles asked Daniel, you've got a sports coat on. What are you? Are you a GM again? Like that was <laughs> yeah. mine. He's like, it seems like you got one foot out the door. Daniel denies having one foot out the door and challenges AJ, AJ to a match tonight. It's funny though, because he, he was on record saying that he's kind of one foot out the door. Yeah, he's like and, scaling back. Right. Yeah. So he tells AJ, if you were a real man, you'd come out for this fight tonight without Omos. And uh, AJ and Omos start to leave, and Daniel's like, well, I'll beat you with or without him. I'm still going to kick your ass. Next up, we have Bailey versus Bianca Belair. Uh, Kayla interviews Bailey backstage before the match. She brags about beating Belair last week and says, I watched Bianca's special on the WWE Network, and... Uh, you know, she it says she ran from her problems or have for half her life, and this Sunday I'm the biggest problem she'll ever face, so she can keep on running. Michael Cole called this the biggest match of Bel Air's career. I mean, she's had title shots, right? But okay. well, not on WWE TV, right? I guess not. Yeah. So during the match, Cole also says Bailey's jealous of the fanfare, but then Bailey yells, "I'm not jealous, Michael." From like inside the ring, if she could hear Cole from in the ring, then they definitely know play the crowd noise for them. Like that's just right. Yeah, you know what I mean, like it's like dead ass silent in there. Oh yeah. So Belair hits the KOD for the win, and she can't believe it. Kayla interviews Bella after the match, and she's so excited. She's like crying that she won a random singles match on SmackDown, which I guess I mean it's weird because then like. Well, were they just like testing that if she could cry because then she wanted to rumble and she was crying? But yeah, why test it on live TV and then do I don't it know. Yeah. again two I days later? Backstage, yeah. it was weird. Just like, you want a random singles match? I can't believe I beat Bailey. What? what? They like Peyton, Royce, job. Peyton Royce beat her at Survivor Series. Everyone's beaten yeah. Bailey, she's been there right. too long. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, so next up we have King Corbin versus Dominic Mysterio. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dominic jumps him from behind before the match. Uh, Ray was on commentary, and uh, Dominic did a lot better this time, but he still fell to the end of days. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Corbin attacked Ray after the match, but Ray won the battle as he gave uh, he pushed Corbin in the ring post, and then he jumped off the apron to give him the uh, the taint to face. Yeah, 
Taint yeah. to face, dick to He's face. Like, you, have the end, you have the end of days. I have the taint to face. <laughs> that move does way too much damage for what, like, it's so dumb. It's right. like a toddler jumping on you. I caught you. <laughs> 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 His taint must just smell awful. I don't know. Uh, backstage, Big E hands Sony Deville some money, and he's like, "How about you let your boy know what his Royal Rumble number is?" As if she would even know, right? Um, and then Sony t- says, uh, "This is a dollar," and Big E says, "Oh, I also got an Arby's coupon coming your way, girl." <laughs> Come on. And then up walks, up walks Miz and Morrison. Wow! Oh. Double whammy. That's four. Yeah. Yeah. He's asked, where's Adam Pierce? Uh, she says, after what happened between Pierce, Reigns, and Heyman last week, some people pulled some strings and he's on a one week off cooling period. Okay. Cooling. Yeah. It's kind of cool. cool. Cool down, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool down. Biggie yells, uh, why did the two of you bring your Monday Night Raw stench to my show? Yeah. Miz teases cashing in on Reigns tonight. And, uh, Morrison was actually funny for maybe the first time since he's been back. Take a listen. The Miz is playing the smart game with that money in the bank contract he took from Otis. Lying in wait, being patient until some champion encounters misfortune. It's kind of like the stock market. You guys probably didn't know this, but you can make money betting against stocks. It's called short selling. I'm about to make a fortune off of GameStop. Yeah. <laughs> Morrison funny? I'm sorry, what? Who are you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. it only took him literally a year. Yeah. Because he's been back for a, a year now as of the Rumble. Oh, right. Yeah. Jesus. Well, a little bit before, but a little before, yeah. yeah. Remember his huge return? Yeah. The Miz doesn't want to talk right now. <laughs> the Miz. <laughs> he just no, walks out of a locker room and Kathy Kelly's like, John Morrison. And he's just like, <laughs> he literally beat the face on the <laughs> Yeah. So when he walks away, Biggie's like, Yeah, I got Rumble stuff, but Miz and Morrison mock him. So Biggie tells them, uh, You two are clearly over the hill thinking you have a chance of winning the Rumble. So they attack him, but the refs break it up. Uh, we'll get back to that. Backstage, Sasha Banks is just walking around looking hot. Uh, when yeah. Kalisto shows up and he's like, Oh, Sasha, sexy mamacita. And he hugs her and and then he leaves. That's all we see of Kalisto. And she's Morrison. like, bottom right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> yeah, she keeps walking, but she runs into Carmela's fuckboy and says, oh, hey, Reginald, if that even is your real name. I didn't get that. Uh, Reginald speaks in French. Uh, he's like, I come in peace. And he offers her a bottle of wine and... He's like, Carmella told me to pick the perfect bottle to pair you with losing your championship. Mm. And then Sasha pretends to seduce him. She puts her hands on him. And, and then she's like, oh, what's the best bottle of wine to give to Carmella when she's drinking it with a broken jaw? And you know, pam, 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 pam. Yeah. <laughs> also backstage, uh, Sami Zayn has his film crew. And he asks Nakamura to repay the favors. And Sami was his liberator once upon a time. Uh, he wants Nakamura to help him get the Intercontinental Championship back, and he also tells him your NXT debut was magic because of me. Your IC title reign was historic because of me. It was probably one of the worst title reigns ever. <laughs> Fair. Um, and then Nakamura tells Sammy, I appreciate everything, but go to hell. So, Ooh. Yeah. Then we have uh, Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns split-screen interview uh, to set up their match. KO is wearing an Everrise Rules t-shirt. Yeah. Bad move, Kevin Owens. And, you know, these split-screen interviews are rarely good, but this one was good because of Kevin Owens. Right. Uh, Reigns kept getting personal, talking about Kevin's father not being a smart man because he didn't teach uh, his son about his own limitations. And then he says, maybe one day when you meet your grandfathers again, they'll make you understand when they tell you, what a disgrace you are to our family. Why didn't you just acknowledge him as our tribal chief? We did. So then KO says the only thing they'd want me to acknowledge is a, that you're a jackass. You surround yourself with yes men. You're just trying to hide the fact you're nothing but an insecure bully. And then Owens really goes off. When I look in the mirror, 
every single time I see exactly what I am, exactly who I am. And that's the person that my father, my mother, my wife, my kids, my grandfather, my grandmother, my entire family will be proud of. And when I look in the mirror after the Royal Rumble, I'm going to still see the same Kevin Owens, but this time I'm going to be Universal Champion. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, very passionate. He keeps going, but then Reigns grabs a TV remote and somehow turns his camera off. So, well, I mean, you know, they're in a thing. It's not exactly hard to uh, do something. Like that. <laughs> or he was like the guy in Dark Knight, the uh, yeah, as for the TV screen. He's like, nope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She like got a TV remote though. Like, I'm just gonna turn Kevin Owens off. It's like, okay, yeah. Uh, for the main event, we got Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles. Well, not really the main event. Uh, we got Omos ringside. Cesaro's on commentary. Sammy comes out mid-match to hold up his justice for Sammy sign. And then Big E comes out a few minutes later and just attacks Sammy. Uh, Cesaro gets up, kicks Big E in the face. It was funny because he was like, that was unprovoked. He was having a silent protest. Right. <laughs> but yeah, another face that attacks a bad guy. Yeah, right. and it's like Miz and Morrison attacked you. Why aren't you going after them? Mm -hmm. Makes no sense. So Daniel Bryan suicide dives onto Sammy and Cesaro, and then uh, Sammy gets in the ring and attacks Daniel for the DQ. Cesaro and Big E get in the ring. They start fighting. Then Nakamura comes out, knocks Sammy and AJ out of the ring, has a stare down with Cesaro, but then Sammy pushes Nakamura into Cesaro, and everyone keeps fighting, and we go to commercial. And then we've got Daniel, Biggie, and Nakamura versus Styles, Sammy, and Cesaro. Mm. Uh, Nakamura and Cesaro start off the match against each other. Which is uh, kind of weird, right? Like, when they were just brawling, they came right. to each other, and they were like, oh, we're friends. Yeah. And they yeah. left. I'm like, oh, that's a cool dynamic. We come back from commercial, and they're beating the crap of each other. Well, mm -hmm. what's the point of that, then? Yes, they didn't hold they're back. Tell a story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just, well, how can they do that? Okay. Uh, so Miz and Morrison come out and they attack Nakamura and Biggie for the DQ. Then Otis comes out stomping like an idiot and he takes out Miz and Morrison and we go to commercial. And if you can't guess what happens next. Oh boy. <clears throat> then uh, I don't know what to tell you. We got Daniel, Biggie, Nakamura and Otis versus Miz, Morrison, Style, Sammy and Cesaro. Michael Cole called it a 10-man tag because he's a fucking idiot and he can't count. Thankfully, yeah. Corey corrected him. Or maybe Cole was just, you know, predicting the future because then Sheamus comes out. Wild and he tags in. <laughs> like, okay, you can do anything in this match. Anything yeah. goes. Michael Cole. Teddy Long's in the back, like, yeah, go, go, go. Michael, go. Cole, said during, <laughs> Michael Cole said during the commercial break, Sonya made this tag match official. She sanctioned this. It's U5 versus U4. But then Sheamus comes out, and it's all good. No sanction yeah. needed. Right. He just went up to her, and he goes, I'm about to run out. Sanctioned? She yeah. Goes, yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, just, just tell the ref I said, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And Sheamus gets the win. He hits the bro kick on Sammy. He wins the match that he was, wasn't even in. Right. <laughs> He's just like, I'm here early for the Rumble. They're like, hey, uh, we got a spot in the tag match. You want to go? Sanctioned. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's like, I watched, I watched a lot of Hulk Hogan footage. He did it a lot. I, you know, yeah. I figured it's cool. So uh, <laughs> Miz and Morrison and Styles attack Sheamus after the match, but then the music hits. And Braun Strowman returns. Spoiling went, his Royal Rumble entry. Yes. I mean, <laughs> it's a great return. You're like, oh, okay, a guy came back. That's a fun surprise. Then you're like, wait a minute. Really? Two days before the Rumble? Yeah. Right. You're going to spoil this? Stop and, spoiling everything. Yeah. He delivers a few running power slams and stands tall. And it's funny, too, because he was number 30 in the Rumble, which. Right. They're, That's a great surprise return spot. So last week we were talking about how they, they, they announced that on WWE backstage they were going to tell us who number 30 is in the Men's Royal Rumble and uh -huh. who number one and two were in the women's. And then they flipped it because they were like, oh, fuck, we don't want to ruin the surprise. So then instead they announced number one and two in the men's and 30 in the women's. But then they still spoil number 30. Yeah. Because we're watching the Rumble 
Seth Rollins comes out at 29, and we're like, oh, who bronze? Oh, who's left? Oh, we know bronze in it. So number 30 is Braun. Number 30, Braun. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no, that's, that's exactly it. You fuckers. Yeah. Like, why not have Seth number 30? I know he was 30 last year, too, but like, you know what yeah. I mean? Don't ruin Braun just for right. him to come out and clean house. It didn't It didn't matter. No, like if you're gonna if you're gonna say bronze back, don't make him number thirty because then it's no fucking fun. When yeah. when number th- the countdown for thirty, it's always oh my god, who's number thirty? Yeah. Oh no, we know who's number thirty. We already knew. Yep. For the minute thirty seconds or two minutes or however long they take in between. Yeah, it varies. They don't, they don't time it. <laughs> they don't time it right. No. So that was SmackDown. Uh, Raw after the Rumble starts with Drew McIntyre. He talks about his match with Goldberg, saying, we beat the crap out of each other. But I earned his respect, and he sure as hell earned mine. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What? what? Respect? Uh, gargling respect. Okay, I think this it. can also be used for gargling nuts or <laughs> cock. <laughs> like thank you, thank you for the match, Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just do like, make the snake still on there. Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's what they were doing to each other. Yeah. Uh, Drew mentions the other matches, but says the men's Royal Rumble match. I had my eye on that one. And then uh, out comes the Royal Rumble winner, Edge. McIntyre tells Edge, when I first arrived in WWE, you were a mentor to me. I was there when you had to retire. And they I always were. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the day when you come back. He's just uh, like, uh, Oh, man, it keeps going. He talks about how excited he was when Edge's music hit at last year's Rumble, when he was in the match. Uh, and he tells, like, you know, it's like even if you were, it's like, oh, fuck, Edge is here. Well, that lowers my chances. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Uh, so he tells Edge, you know, I'm proud of you. I'm happy for you. And Edge tells McIntyre, you know, I really like you, but and I, I've been your mentor to you, so I have to be blunt with you. Like, what's wrong with you? I won the Royal Rumble last night. I'm an immediate. I'm I'm an immediate uh, threat to you, and instead of kicking my head off, you're showering me with compliments. Yeah, yeah. Andrew, good point. Like, well, that's not the kind of champion I am. And sprinkling cool water on his butt. That's right. I just like uh, that's right. Yeah, you're not me. Uh, then Sheamus comes out and he asks Edge, uh, "Who are you to question my friends? He's carried this company while you were at home sitting on your arse." Mm. Uh, Drew may uh, want to take the high road on all this, but I sure as hell don't. So McIntyre tells Edge, you won the Royal Rumble last night. Are you going to make a decision or am I going to make it for you? So Edge says, I'm the ultimate opportunist. You will know when I make my decision. And whoever I choose, I'm walking out of WrestleMania as a champion. So, yeah, he's challenging Roman. Yeah. The dream well, match, though, would be <laughs> for Styles to win it at Elimination Chamber and then Edge fights Styles at Mania. Be cool too. That would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Could yeah, still I think it's gonna be Roman. Do you see who's showing up on NXT tomorrow? Uh, Edge to make us think that maybe he'll fight Finn Balor. Yeah, I mean that would be great too. That's but... too much of a cock tease. That's like no, yeah. just do that. Right. right. Yeah, he he certainly teased it. Did they confirm it or was it just his tweet? No, no, he they NXT posted it. Oh, they confirmed it. On, yeah, confirmed. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I think maybe like at the end of SmackDown or something, he spears Roman out of nowhere. You know, that yeah, would right. be cool. Um, but I don't know if he beats Roman. I don't know if he beats Roman. <sighs> They've had. I mean, they have to. They had like, come on. He he went in at number one. Yeah, ran the whole damn thing. He came all the way back from injury twice. Yeah. Like, he'd have to win it. He'd have I mean, to win right. A few years ago, Nakamura and Asuka won the Rumble, and they both lost at WrestleMania. They both they did, lost. but Seth and Becky won it. Drew won it. Like, you typically win it. They're starting to get it right again. Yeah. I don't think they screwed this up. Whoever he fights, I think he's winning that title. Now, but if he, only they could translate that to money know. in the bank. Right. You know. Which no one really cashes in anymore. Yeah. We'll see. So... Edge leaves, and then they show a really tight close-up on McIntyre staring at him, which made it so obvious which was coming next. He turns around, and he gets a brogue kick from his former best friend. Yeah. Why now? Like, why do it now? It doesn't so they can so he can fight someone at the next pay per view. 
Yeah. That'll be his challenge. Sure. His, yeah. his best friend. Yeah. I got so tired of right. hearing the term best friend this well, week. Well, I, I certainly don't want this for Mania. No, of course not. But I mean, no. it was coming. I guess. Yeah, like the second they said that they were friends, like when the fuck were they friends? No, yeah. I made that up. <laughs> yeah. Keith Best Lee friends watching. for 20 years. <laughs> there are all these like memes of Keith Lee watching at home and it's like Leo DiCaprio pointing to the TV like. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, like they really need to change how they shoot stuff because anytime they have a tight close up on someone, and there's two guys in the ring. The next thing that's coming is they're getting attacked. Yes. So it's so obvious. They have to change that. Right. So Caruso interviews Seamus backstage and he says, everybody knows me as Drew McIntyre's friend, but he's no longer my friend and I want the WWE championship. Just like that. And then for some reason, Drew Gulak gives Seamus his luggage and Seamus leaves the building. And even Caruso's like, what the fuck? What? What was yeah. What's going on here? And Gulak's just like, I'm just happy to be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's uh, TV bonus money this week. Yep. Yeah. And I don't have to chase after the 24-7 title. It's perfect. Perfect. Yeah, right. By the way, R-Truth lost that at the Rumble to, um, what the fuck's his name? Peter, Pete Rosenberg or whatever. Yes. And I was like, oh, yeah, he'll probably win it back on his stupid show on ESPN. And that's what happened. Oh, of it course. did. Yeah. Which I'm surprised they didn't mention it on Raw. <laughs> yeah, why didn't they? What are they waiting for? Because yeah. they don't care about that title anymore. Clearly. Yeah. Uh, so next up, we have Riddle versus Bobby Lashley for the United States Championship. Okay! 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 Two minutes into the match, Riddle was on the apron and Lashley was in the ring. Lashley put Riddle in the hurt lock through the ropes, um, which clearly is not legal there. Right. So ref counts, but Lashley doesn't let go. So the ref DQs him. Uh, Lashley puts Riddle in the hurt lock again after the match. And MVP and the ref are begging Lashley to stop. MVP's like, you're going to kill him. Uh, Lashley lets yeah. go, but then like gives MVP like the crazy eyes. Uh, and then he reapplies the hurt lock on Riddle. Eventually he releases it and throws Riddle over the barricade. And then Lashley walks up the ramp as MVP smiles. Yeah. And after the break, Riddle wakes up and asks the refs, who is I wrestling? What? Of course he had to ruin it, you know. So he said being so like, Riddle pissed off and being serious about it. Yeah. He's like, what happened, bro? Yeah. yeah. So no. Uh, and Riddle, Riddle had tapped like right after they called for the bell because he was disqualified. And they were like, Riddle tapped. Yeah. But, but the bell was called. Well, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. You, you, right. It doesn't matter yeah. that he tapped. It's not a legal hold when it's it's a rope break. You can't yeah. even if he tapped and the ref saw it. It's a rope break. You right. can't. It wouldn't count, you idiots. And then afterwards, when he's outside the ring getting the hurt lock, he's tapping. You're like, who are you tapping for? The match is right. over. I don't understand what they're doing. Are you Do they like him or not? Because they keep like he keeps losing. He well, he keeps winning by DQ against Lashley, but then Lashley just fucking murders him. Yeah. And now he's got like amnesia. That might be his new gimmick. He'll like just walk around and be like, you know, like, who are you, bro? <laughs> who are you, bro? Who yeah. are you, bro? Who am I, bro? Yeah. So 100% he's winning this title now. I don't, I don't know. I don't know now. I mean, honestly, like, you're going to keep screwing him over? What's the point at this point? Like, why I even also, do it? I also don't care. Yeah. yeah that too. Uh, backstage, a car pulls into the garage, and we can't see. Oh. Now, remember when we were younger, this would always be something huge, like, oh, it's Vince returning, or it's someone returning, or just like right. anyone really cool is showing up. Yeah. Guy gets out, the cameraman zooms in on his shoes first, and then goes up and up, and it's and Vince. It's it's Bad Bunny. No, 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 no. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. <laughs> This was not worth worth the surprise shot. No. No. Later, we see Bad Bunny talking with Damian Priest, and we're like, oh, that's his call-up. Yeah. Great job. His call-up was backstage. He's pretending to talk to Bad Bunny with music. That's his call-up moment. Yeah. Call-up moment. Mm-hmm. We'll get back to this. 
<clears throat> yeah. Next up, we have a Randy Orton backstage promo. Orton says, Edge, Edge, I never thought you'd come back, and now you've won the Royal Rumble, making me look like a damn fool. Uh, after everything I've done for you and your family, so tonight there will be no mercy, no compassion, and for you there will be no main events of WrestleMania. <sighs> so it's like, oh, I guess we're doing this again. Cool. I know. How do you do it again when yeah. they've so many times? You even had them one and two in the Rumble. How many yeah. times do you have to watch this match? Right. It's supposed to be the greatest match of all time, and it wasn't. Then Edge got hurt. Now we have to do it again? That's yes. like he, he got his revenge. He beat him in the Rumble, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. No, it's, he's got to be a singles match, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, next up, we got Xavier Woods versus Mustafa Ali. Are you, again? Uh, uh, have they done this one? Well, they've Didn't done they do it last week. No, he fought uh, Mustafa. Wasn't he fighting Slapdick or whatever? Oh, uh, maybe, fighting. yeah. So, yeah, we got Kofi, T-Bar, and Slapfuck ringside. Uh, Kofi and Woods were acting like total goofballs backstage before the match. And, like, seeing Kofi like that, it's hard to believe that he won the WWE Championship at WrestleMania two years ago. I know. Two years ago. What you make him do. He's like, do you know what? It's just like, oh, God. Yeah. Just so embarrassing. Yeah. What a shame. And like yep. they, they rarely even acknowledge that win anymore. No, of course no. not. It's the only been. way they acknowledge it is to say that Brock Lesnar beat him in like four yeah. seconds. That's it. Every single time. Yeah. So Woods hits the clothesline from Smell and goes for the pin, but T-Bar breaks it up right in front of the ref. Mm-hmm. Right in front of the ref. Oh. <laughs> and now the ref, <laughs> there's nothing about it. Sorry. <laughs> and man. you lost his shit. In more ways than one. The ref just goes, hey. Continue. All right. All right. <laughs> and action. Yeah. Kofi attacks Slapjack by jumping off T-Bar's arm. And then Woods rolls up Ali for the win. What is the point of any of this if Woods is just going to beat him? Yeah. Right. Later on Raw Talk, Xavier Woods demanded to have a match against Reckoning. And uh, it was a funny little promo. I, I recommend checking it out. He was like, give me reckoning, you cowards. It was really funny. <laughs> um, next up, we have Ms. TV. Their guest is Bad Bunny, and we watch replays of what happened at the Rumble uh, where Ms. and Morrison asked you know, him to join them. He declined, so Ms. smashed the, his DJ set, and then Bad Bunny cost them their, the Rumble, and then he dove on them. So Miz says, you know, I think we both did things we regret last night, so I just want to apologize. Bad Bunny accepts his apology, but he won't give one back. Miz says, you know, I heard that you want to become a WWE superstar. Is that right? And Bad Bunny's like, yes, it's one of my dreams. And Miz says, you know, I took a B-plus player like Daniel Bryan and turned him into a WrestleMania main eventer. So we can teach you how to become a WWE superstar and all we'd ask in return is uh, you helping us record an album and they sing one of their songs. Take a listen. This Morrison and the Bad Bunny travel around the world making all the money. Huh. I born dad in nos palabras, pero nos baile es como chupacabra. Say, hey, hop, hop, somos caballeros. That's good. Yeah. No, 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 no. I didn't like wow. It. Um, Roman Reigns was asked to comment. Roman, I don't watch. Roman. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> this, this is the reason. My this bad. Is the reason. Yeah, <laughs> this is why. Um, yeah, JBL also commented on that. Uh, what do you say? This could be the worst event in wrestling history. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it made it on. Oh, that's great. <laughs> wow, we're gonna hit that quite a lot moving forward. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Bad Bunny turns them down again. So Miz flips out and uh, threatens him. Bad Bunny says, the only reason I'm here is because a good friend of mine wanted to be on Miz TV. Yeah. Lights go out and Damian Priest comes out. That's his Monday Night Raw debut. I'm friends with Bad Bunny. The yeah. only reason I'm here. Well, no, it's not his debut there. He showed him in a backstage segment. Yeah. yeah. Did they it's really like, show that they It's were like when they brought talking. back Jericho and he punches the runner and then he's standing like doing like this. And yeah. it's like, what what was the point of that? You he's know, about this, to come out. 
This right. couldn't have been what they planned on. I mean, saying the line, he's going to need a doctor or a priest and yeah. referring to Dominic Mysterio. And then we heard all the rumors about him helping them. That would have been decent. Then you would have had a Corbin versus priest little feud. Sure. Yeah. Right. That's good. Two big guys, you know, and uh, this is just awful. No, the only reason Damian awful. Priest is on Raw is because of Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny got him his call up. Like, yeah. What? And what? I don't know why they had to show it, show them hanging out backstage for three seconds as if that would have made. Oh, now it makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now it's legitimate. Oh, because they're both Puerto Rican. Because they're both Puerto Rican, they have to be friends. That's racist. Yeah, it's true. That yeah. is racist. Wait, are they Puerto Rican? I don't think he's Puerto Rican, bad boy. Yeah, he is. Okay. Yeah. And and priest is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and going back to the Jericho thing, Eric, like all they had to do was show that someone clotheslined, they didn't have to show who clotheslined him. Right, yeah. It would have been like, you know, oh, who clotheslined him? Oh, and you know, like, yeah, it would it's so easy. Uh, so, yeah, Priest gets in the ring, and he knocks Miz out of the ring with a forearm to the face. And then we have Damian Priest versus The Miz with Morrison ringside and Bad Bunny sitting by the commentary table. Uh, Morrison distracts the ref while Miz goes for the Money in the Bank briefcase, but Bad Bunny grabs it first. Morrison demands Bad Bunny. Get, I hate saying Bad Bunny. I hate saying it so much. BB. Uh, uh, don't blame you. <laughs> Morrison demands BB. Give him the briefcase. So BB. BB does and then uh he pops <laughs> bb pops <laughs> morrison in the head with his pink microphone and then after that priest hits miz with the reckoning for the win and yeah, I'm, not, I'm not talking about reckoning from retribution he didn't pick up mia yim and, and hit her hit, over, oh. hit miz with, with him <laughs> his oh. move is called the reckoning so they need to figure that out pretty soon yeah, yeah. that'll be fine if Mia Yim's going to change her stupid retribution name. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. We'll so see. next up, we have uh, Lucha House Party versus the Hurt Business for the Raw Tag Titles with MVP on commentary. This is... Uh, Cedric sets up for his finisher, but Shelton tags himself in and hits Metalik with pay dirt for the win. So That's all you need to know. Why? Like, they're still doing this? Like, we're still right. doing this? It's kind of like right. our title. We're still right. doing this? Like I we're still, still trying to hurt each other. And I still don't get why they're doing this, especially yeah. with Cedric, who's the new guy in the group. Right. He's right. turned heel. Like, what are you teasing that he's... We need a month-long setup for whatever the hell this is going to lead to. What are you teasing that Cedric's going to turn face again? Please, God, no. Right. <laughs> like, keep the Hurt Business together. They're yeah, they're cool. decent. They're decent. They're kind of a cool stable. For sure. Keep them together for a while. It just started. You would have had Keith Lee join. It would have added something. To like it. this is the best yeah. Bobby Lashley's ever been because he doesn't have to talk. Right. He has MVP to talk for him, and he's just a wild maniac. Yeah, yeah. This is the best Bobby Lashley's ever looked. Yeah, the best MVP's ever been. Yeah, for sure. They have a reason. They have a story. What? Huh? Yeah, I know. Yeah, they have a story that they're telling. Right. And that's that they're actually a thing. And when Retribution tried to come in, they became kind of like. WWE's protectors. It was a cool right. little, like, momentary swerve, but we knew it yeah. wasn't going to last. It was great. Yeah. Now they're just doing stupid shit. Like they're they're going up against horrible competitors, and it's leading right. to nothing. I mean, they have three titles in the group. I mean, yeah, yeah. Act so. like it, you know. Act right. like what Joey says. Act like you've been there. Act yeah. like you've been there. Yeah. 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 Next up, we have Oscar and Charlotte versus Mandy and Dana. Versus mm. Naomi and Lana. Mm. Huh. No. Well, Lana likes to dance. No. And <laughs> Naomi likes to dance. Dance. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> this is a number one contender match for the women's tag titles. Asuka and Charlotte cut a promo backstage before the match, and Asuka is just a complete buffoon. Boy. She's like, uh, Charlotte, was, I was ready. And it was just like, I don't think she was speaking any language there. It was awesome. Yeah. And then uh, Lana and Naomi also had a promo. And Lana, it was obvious she was reading from cue cards. It was so bad. She was just like, I'm ready. And now I have a tag me partner to do it with. Hmm. And um, <laughs> she looks more like a clown than ever before like i don't what is she doing to her face 
Like, I just don't understand. Go look at her, like, in 2015. Yeah. Look at her now. It's two different people. People are so stupid. Why did you mess with her? You're pretty. You don't touch it. Why? You don't mess with it. Yeah. And she just has layers layers of makeup on. It's like, at this point, you're not even, like, kissing a a real person. So, uh, there was a really weird moment, too, during the match where Dana was trying to chop Charlotte in the corner, but yeah. Charlotte wasn't letting her. Like, she kept trying to, like, put Charlotte's arms behind the rope so that she could chop her properly. And then Charlotte was like, no, no. just." And then Charlotte was just, like, blocking all the chops. Like, was she trying to protect her boobs because they've been damaged so many times? Did you forget? Maybe. Oh, stop this. Because yeah. yeah. she's had reconstructive yeah. surgery on those tits, like, many times. So maybe that yeah. was it. Because she was not letting her do it. It was so weird. Lana's 35, so she's already a lot older than most of her uh, yeah. female competitors. She's way past her prime um, in wrestling, which she never had one. But if she yeah. did, you would say that. She had a prime when she was <laughs> Rusev's yes. manager and was bad. Right. and You know what I mean? They were bad yeah. together. She was great. Right. Uh, later in the match, Charlotte hits Dana with natural selection. But then Ric Flair and Lacey Evans come out. Um, just pin her, Charlotte. Just pin her. Yeah. Pin her, then go. They're waiting. Right. Then go. They'll uh, wait Charlotte, for you. Charlotte gets up, tags herself out, and heads to the back. Slowly. And Oscar's like, what the fuck? And then Asuka turns around, and Naomi hits her with the big bl- butt blast for the win. Yeah, that's it. So Naomi and Lana are getting the tag title shot. And gets yeah. And, and, yeah. and maybe this is the end of Asuka and Charlotte. I'm no. sure. I thought you going to say maybe this is the end of Lana. Like one more table for the road. <laughs> yeah, right. And then we'll never see her again. Maybe. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Charlie Caruso interviewing Drew McIntyre backstage. Uh, she actually, Caruso actually says Seamus attacked you earlier and he hasn't given a reason why. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> he said. He said it. He literally said it. He said, I'm coming for the WWE Championship. Yes. He I said, everyone knows me as Drew McIntyre's friend. He gave two reasons. Right. So, okay. <clears throat> uh, Drew's very emotional here. He's like, families fight all the time. And Sheamus and I have fought more times than I can count, but this was different. And then he looks in the camera to uh, address Sheamus directly and says, uh, you're willing to throw away a 20-year friendship over this, so be it. You want the match, you've got it. He said, we've fought many times before, but this is different. He kicked you once. How is this different? Yeah. It's got to be like right. one of the lesser fights that you've had. You've had. Seriously. <laughs> like you have a title that he wants. Like it kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but it was probably over like who's going to pay the bill. You know, <laughs> this was like a deliberate planned bro kick to the face. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. Like, if we were in wrestling per canon, like, I would screw over both of you because I know down the road we can be a tag team again. Yeah. Sure. We'll all totally. be friends again. We'll all be friends again. Yeah, it's wrestling. And then I'll turn on you. Eric will turn on me. And then it'll, yeah. it's, you know, it's a circle. And then we'll have a big comeback again. Yeah. yeah I, again. Yeah. Where's Andrew? We'll all, we'll Where's all it? Oh, Andrew went to AEW. All right. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'll be my- Whatever. <laughs> I said that. That's your guy. <laughs> uh, so next up, we have Elias and Jackson Riker versus Jeff Hardy and Carlito. Yeah. God, he looks so good. He's he like really so freaking jacked. It's and they really- said he's back. Like he's back, back. Yeah. yeah. That's I mean, awesome. It is cool to see him back, but why is he in this match? Oh, just to give him a warm up match. Why not? Yeah. In this feud, yeah. he's involved. You know, with his good friend Jeff Hardy. Yeah, they went to. They've been friend for, friends for 20 years. They went to camp together, I'm sure, or something. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, so Carlito hits Elias with the backstabber, and then Jeff hits the Swanton Bomb for the win. Yep. yep. Next, we have a backstage promo from Edge. Mm. Edge says, I won the Royal Rumble, but I still have this black cloud over my head, and that black cloud is Randy Orton. Edge then addresses Orton saying, I have to put you behind me tonight so I can walk into the main event of WrestleMania to take back a championship that I never lost. So tonight mm. ends. So nice. Uh, after the commercial break, 
Edge shakes Damian Priest's hand and says, good job last night. You impressed me. Uh, welcome to Raw. We need guys like you. So giving him a little rub there. Yeah. What title did he lose? Like, what title did he have when he retired? The, the World Championship. World oh, well, rate. that one doesn't exist anymore, Edge. So sorry. Oh, yeah. There's no winning it back. But I guess if there was one, this it would have to be the Universal Championship. Universal is yeah. technically that title ish, yeah. kind of maybe. Yeah. Worst name, worst title, or maybe he'll just go. Yeah, maybe he'll they'll just bring back that title so he could only have three. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm just <laughs> um, <laughs> we need more belts, is what I'm saying. We don't have yeah. enough belts on WWE TV. Yeah, we need more world championships. <laughs> <laughs> Universal championships. Uh, what's that? Oh, I'm the Big Bang Championship. <laughs> uh, dibs on that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up, we have Alexa Bliss versus Nikki Cross. Uh, I forgot how bad Nikki's new theme music is because we haven't heard it in a while. Yeah, you have to listen. You have to watch the main event to hear it. Yes, yeah. true. Uh, so the match starts. Nikki yells, "What do you want from me, Alexa? You are my best friend. I want nothing to do with you anymore." Uh, so mid match, Nikki kicks Alexa in the corner, but then Alexa's music hits and she magically transforms into Goddess Alexa. Magic, yep, magic. And look, oh, magic. if you can't beat him, join him, right? No, no. 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 So like, because she looks so hot, I, mean, I was yeah, like, she all right, so hot. Fine. She I definitely her personality change. Mm -hmm. At least let her go into the ring and come out. So there's like a chance. She could put on a different outfit, a chance, or fix her hair. But yeah, this is this is too magical for me. But again, your sus suspension of disbelief, and or really you know, or cut the lights, right? Uh, like anything, anything. Right. Right. right? And again, like the, like it, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Like again, that that means it was all pre-recorded because the fans on the fan screens, yeah, it's just it's all stupid. So, yep, uh, mid-match. Uh, I'm sorry, after that, uh, Alexa goes for a hug like she's back. Goddess Alexa's back, but Nikki doesn't fall for it. Uh, then the Firefly Funhouse music hits, and Alexa transforms back. Uh, and then in the end, Alexa sets up for the sister Abigail, but then she turns it into a DDT, and they're like, oh, wow, look at that. There's some twisted uh, twisted version of the sister Abigail. And it's like, yeah. Twisted sister. Or, you know... Uh, ah, Velveteen like Dream's DDT. Yeah, yeah. Andrade's, right? Velveteen Dream. Oh, okay. Like, oh. go every time Velveteen Dream would grab him like he was doing the Sister Abigail. Yeah, then he would. Do that and then turn. Like, it's Velveteen Dream's DDT. I'm well, sure he's not on TV anymore, so it's fine. <clears throat> yeah, he's gone. I'm sure Michael Cole was backstage somewhere yelling, but Velveteen Dream does that! <laughs> right. Yeah. Shut up. Michael Cole was dead asleep in his bed and he popped up and yelled that. <laughs> yeah. So Alexa gets the win, but Randy Orton comes out as she heads up the ramp and she stares at him. She's still mm. pissed, but Orton doesn't even make eye contact. So mm. bad move, sucker. We got Randy Orton versus Edge in the main event. Uh, late in the match, Orton hits the draping DDT and sets up for the RKO, but then the music plays. And Alexa appears sitting on top of one of the turnbuckles with blood coming out of her mouth. As long um, as blood is dark black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She just starts pushing it out. So Orton stares at her, uh, but when he turns around, Edge spears him for the win. Yeah. And that's the end of Raw. More magic. Thus ending the feud? Yeah. Which, which feud's over? Edge None and Orton. Yeah. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I know. No, no, no. He didn't have a fair shot. Yeah. 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 I was distracted, Edge. I mean, who else is Edge going to fight at Fast Lane and Elimination Chamber? Mm, well, he might be even point. those. Oh, God. We'll see, I guess. Right. All right. Now it's time for awards. <laughs> Who'd you have for worst dressed? I had Bad Bunny. Mm. Uh -huh. That's a pretty good one. I had Reginald. Okay. I had Lana. All right. Lana the Clown. Yeah. Hong Best, Hong. <laughs> Best dressed. Uh, Sasha. Correct. I mean, mm -hmm. gosh, I think I think she's been my award winner every week this year. I mean, maybe. In about four or five weeks, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't um, blame me. 
Yeah, I'm going penis. Um, I thought uh, Carlito looked uh, really good, really wow. good. Like what specifically, yeah. Joe? Like his pecs, his abs? His dick? Yeah. No, no, it's like his pecs, his shoulders, his penis. Like his hair was nice, his goat, his balls. Like everything, to me, <laughs> looked great. Yeah. Like I was like, Perfect. I'm really happy to see him, you know, taint. Like I'm glad that he's back. <laughs> You know what I mean? Ask like like I'm glad like <laughs> we him. Fair yeah. enough. Thank yeah. You. Uh, worst acting. Uh, I had Bad Bunny. That's so funny. I had Bad Bunny. Let me get out my broom so we can sweep it. Yeah. yeah. Best acting. I'd Edge. I had Edge, but Kevin Owens was just too good. Yeah, I had or, Kevin. I had Kevin Owens. Are you talking about his? grandparents and his dad and right yeah it's good worst comment uh Miz's song that's correct yeah that is correct yeah that was that was horrible and we'll go with that we'll sweep it but uh, honorable mention is uh does this mean that Braun had declared for the rumble match and Cole says yes it does what when did you you both were surprised he came out you didn't know he was there right yeah. how did he declare for the match when did that happen the hell, Cole? He sent Michael a tweet right before he came through the curtain. <laughs> a text. Yeah. What is what is this? Uh, best comment. Uh, I just had Edge's promo, um, especially you know the win back the title I never lost. That sounded just like Edge. Thank you. Thank I worked you. on it. I, I uh, got yeah. it. I had the GM thing. That AJ Styles said about Daniel. Oh, Martin. yeah, that was good. I had Morrison's GameStop joke. Mm, okay. Because it was the first time he made me laugh, and probably the only time. Yeah. <laughs> Worst match? Uh, Lashley Riddle. <clears throat> that was my super slow mo. I had the six or the 10 man tag. You know, take your pick. I had the. I had Daniel Bryan versus AJ, and then Daniel Bryan and, and the six man tag, and then the nine man tag, and then the 10 man tag. That's yeah. What I had. Uh, my slumma was the three-way women's tag. Same here. All right. Best match? Uh, Ed Jordan. Mm. All right. Worst move? <laughs> <laughs> I guess really let's sweep it. <laughs> no, there was magic in that match. I can't pick magic. It's hard to pick uh, magic. It sucks because Alexa and Nikki had a good match, a good wrestling match, and told a nice little story. Yeah. But too much magic. Too much magic. Bianca how versus will she, Bailey. How will how will Maybe. we know that she's goddess bliss if she's not wearing the? I know. How about just play her music and have her look down and be like, "What is this? <laughs> Why my hair?" Like she comes back for a minute. She doesn't she know where she is. What she used yeah. to do. Right now they they, they all right. Worst uh, worst move. Uh, the bro kick out of nowhere. Yeah, same. We, we saw it coming a mile away. Yeah, all right. Also, the timing, like, give me a break. Yeah. Best move? Uh, I had the uh, the Twisted Sister, as Joe called it. Yeah, her. me too. Yeah, it was cool. So that's what, wasn't that uh, Nikki Cross's finisher used to be called? No, hers was Twisted Sister. I don't think no, so. That's... Wait, Twisted Sister. No, that's a famous group. rock group. That's why Twisted I couldn't. Twisted Sister is Candice LeRae's finishing move. <laughs> that's what she calls it. Really? Sister, yeah. Oh. No, Wicked Stepsister. Oh, that's Wicked Stepsister. Again, they can't call it Twisted Sister because that's a famous rock band. I don't think yeah. they could do that. But is, yeah, all right. Famous. Uh, b -b -b worst moment or segment? Uh, Braun spoiling his Rumble return. Yeah, I mean, uh, Miss TV. Really was cares about Braun, to, but yeah, Miss TV. Miss TV. That was bad. I yeah. hated that. Too. Miss TV is just, you know. Yeah, the side watch during that best moment or segment. Uh, I had I had Owen's promo here. Mm. I thought that was the best thing all week oh, out of the two shows. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess so. What else? I'm gonna say, say the blackout, like at the end of Raw, like when like when it's when over, when it was over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, credits. The like two seconds from like when Raw's over before the next show starts. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, if I had to pick something, I guess Kevin Owens promo or Edge's promo. Yeah. 
All right, breaking news. John Cena recently told Sports Illustrated that there is no mathematical way he can be at WrestleMania this year. He explained that he's currently in Vancouver shooting P- uh, Peacemaker, which is uh, going to be his new show on HBO Max. And given the current quarantine regulations, it would shut down production of the new show for two weeks if he had to, you know, leave and come back. <clears throat> yeah. So it seems pretty legitimate. You know. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't expect him to do much, you know. Even I guess, if he did come back. Dallas, maybe he'll be like on. He'll do some fucking video or something. Probably. Hey guys, all right, can be there. Uh, also, Mark Calloway, aka The Undertaker, was on Joe Rogan's podcast two weeks ago. Did you see this? Did you hear about this? Did you hear about this? I heard he was on there. I haven't heard the show. <clears throat> Same. Yeah, I listened to it. So Taker told Rogan, "It's hard to watch wrestling nowadays because I think the product is a little soft." I remember walking into my first real dressing room and all I saw were some crusty fucking men. Half of them had guns and knives in their bags. Shit got handled back then. Now you walk in, there's guys playing video games and making sure they look pretty. It's evolution, I guess. I don't know what it is, but I just like those errors, man. I like when I liked when men were men. Wow. And uh, I saw a tweet from a fan saying, dude, you wore eyeliner your entire career. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got that more manly than that. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns responded to Taker's comments on Corey Graves' podcast saying, I really feel like he misspoke because Mark's a really good guy. I think it was just like a retired guy trying to sound gangster. So. Okay. Uh, Corey also asked Reigns if he ever wishes uh, he could have been around during the Attitude Era, and Reigns said, to be honest, it would have been too easy. I feel like John Cena said it before. It's a challenge to be PG. It's a challenge uh, to not have to go the cheap route. If I could just start chugging bourbon and smoking cigars, imagine what my character would be. We could go even further on this mob boss thing. It's like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it sounds imagine amazing. Imagine what that would be like, Roman. Yeah. Was it the cheap route if it's also the better route? He calls right. it the cheap route, but then he's like, wouldn't it be awesome if I could chug bourbon and smoke cigars? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Can you do that, please? <laughs> Go to AEW. You could do it there. Yeah. So, I don't know. I thought that was interesting. Eric, you got anything? <clears throat> uh, nothing really news wise now. Well, then let's get to rumors. Rumors. Kevin Owens wins back the Universal title? Maybe. Balor Club to finally get a second member? Too sweet. Brock Lesnar willingly works a full schedule? No chance. Next year's WrestleMania will be in Saudi Arabia? Confirmed. So Dave Meltzer reports that Becky Lynch is on her way back to WWE. Uh, So I guess we can expect her back soon. Maybe for Mania? Maybe. Maybe. Had a baby. But uh, yeah, well, I guess we'll see. Uh, also, according to Meltzer, users will not be able to pause or rewind live WWE streams on Peacock. He said the features may be added eventually, but not at the launch. I also right. heard you that you things on that network now. Well, yeah, but I don't know if they have any live streams on there. Or yeah. They- oh, I, I also heard Peacock. like if you come into a pay-per-view late, you can't play it from the beginning. You have to wow. play it from exactly where it is. Well, hopefully they fix that shit soon. Yeah. I don't know. Also, PW Insider reports that Lars Sullivan. <laughs> we're not going to yes, be hearing him. that. We're not going to be hearing that ever again because he's no longer with WWE. Uh, they quietly released him last month. Mm. Oh, they did. That's what PW Insider reports. Hmm. I'm so confused. Why did you bring him back for three weeks? Hype him up to never be seen again. I don't understand. Right. And then uh, FIFA reports that 2K Games representatives were at the Royal Rumble to get voiceovers and scans from the talent, which is disappointing probably to anyone because some months ago there was a rumor that WWE would be moving on from 2K to find a new developer, you know, a company that could make a wrestling game. Yes. Well, because the last 2K game was dog shit. Yeah. yeah. 
So that's... I guess they went back to the drawing board. You can only hope. Yeah. So, Eric, what do you have? Uh, speaking of rumors, uh, the rumor pre-order bonus for 2K this year is uh, CM Punk. Yeah, oh, I heard that too, which is kind of interesting. Who's yeah. saying that? Who's saying that? I've seen it a few different places. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. It's a rumor, right. but it'd be interesting for sure. All yeah. right. Anything um, else? Yeah, I also have that uh, PW Insider is saying that Christian is back with WWE on a part-time schedule. That's so cool. we may see a few yeah. pay-per-view matches. <laughs> I kind of want to see, like, a title match between him and Edge. Do you know? Yeah. A lot yeah. of people are a lot of people are wanting him to get a shot um, at the IC title since he never like. I think Joe did trivia on that last year, where Christian's last match in WWE was winning a number one contender match for the Intercontinental Championship, but he never got his title shot. So like, yeah. he comes back six or seven years later, and it's like, I want my title oh, shot. Yeah, shot. right. That's pretty funny. That would be cool. Well, because yeah. uh, I think Big E end up, ended up winning it, and mm. that's the first guy he kind of, like, went after in the Rumble. He gave right. Big E an unprettier. Yeah. So, yeah. Maybe. Hmm. Uh, um, all right. But that's all I got. Trivia time. All right. So Randy Orton finished number two last night in the Rumble. Um, except for his first ever Rumble. Randy Orton has finished in the final X in every other Rumble he's competed in. So in other words, I'm looking for like top three, top 10, top 12. No. Mm. But it's, a, it's, a, it's, like... a, it's, a, it's an impressive number. I'll just give you that hint. Top five. Eric, top any other six. Games? Yeah, final six in every Rumble he's been in since his first one in 2004. So yeah, that's kind of crazy. Damn. That's kind of crazy. And then uh, we were asking about this last night. So, um, and again, thanks to Pro Wrestling to Statistics for this on Instagram. Um, the last Rumble match that featured both Christian and Edge. Uh -huh. Any guesses? Christian and What year? Uh, 2009. 11? No, a lot earlier than that. No. 2006? 2003. Was the last time they were in a match, the Rumble match together. Mm. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Now I think that's because Edge was always in title matches during the yeah. Rumble. That that can be it. Of, you know. Sure, 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 sure. All right, there's your trivia. All right, uh, fan questions. El Juanismo, what's the Bad Bunny dream match that you're dying to see, guys? Uh, Bad Bunny versus a trash compactor. <laughs> that's basically that's bad. Yeah. Yeah. A loser leaves town match, and it's on like a dark show where we don't get to ever see it. Like yeah. YouTube, yeah. like main event or something. And he, and he loses. Yeah. Mohit Bali, how long before Damien Priest loses his first name and starts uh, tagging, tag teaming with the Messiah? The, the Messiah, Messiah and the Priest. <laughs> and then James Mahone said, I'm honestly surprised they didn't bring him up as Damien the Priest and have him, <laughs> and have him with Seth. Right. Sure. Uh, James also wants to know, how would you book The Fiend's return? Well, I booked it. I would have had him win the Royal Rumble. At number 30. Yeah. That would have been pretty cool, huh? Nope. Uh, Cold Stone Certainly Steve not. Austin. Cold Stone Steve Austin. This is Rito. Can you give a – or no, is this Rito? I think hmm. so. Uh, can you give a shout-out to Rich Prifty and Todd Fricker for winning our Royal Rumble shirt competition? So I guess that's why they bought T-shirts. You just did. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. What, so what is that? <laughs> what? <laughs> Eric, you seem to know about this. Uh, yeah, it was uh, the fans on our Facebook. We already covered this. Uh, okay. We already covered it. They won. Andrew mentioned the names. Awesome. Oh. Eric, tell us, please. <laughs> tell us again. Yeah. Uh, on our Facebook group, they did a Rumble number contest, and – Whoever had the number of the winning entrant got a shirt. Uh, mm. it, it was put up by one of our members. Uh, I think it may have been Juvencio. Oh, Juvencio. Okay, maybe it was Juvencio. So then they have to yeah. trust that he's going to Venmo them. So good luck. 
Yes. Uh, and Stewart. Don't shit on him for doing something cool, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> joke. We don't make jokes on this podcast. Oh, man. No. Uh, Justin serious. Stewart. Will we ever see Goldberg again? Yes, he's yes contract match contract or two match a year contract. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. Uh, Matt Sillett, do you think WWE has truly built more young talent? Thinking back to a few years, uh, there was Roman, Seth, and that was pretty much it for top tier talent. Well, who's big? That's a new face, though. I mean, Drew's not new. Roman's the champ. He's not new. Big E's not new. Lashley's yep. not new. I don't know. I don't know who they're pushing. Riddle's a yeah. joke. He's new. Shinsuke's still kind of a joke. Uh, Sammy's yeah. a joke. Owens can't win shit. So, no, they ain't pushing anything. Yeah. Nope. Kyle Foxton, did you guys happen to see the freeze frame picture of Bianca's feet touching the ground at the end of the rumble? Yep. Uh, yeah. I mentioned it, too. I was like, I think both of her feet just touched. Yeah. But, like yeah. a lot of things at the rumble that night, we're not supposed to know about it. Everyone's wondering if they're going to make an angle out of it with Ripley and Belair and SmackDown. I hope not. Yeah. Luis Torres, how many fear boners did Joe get watching Raw? Uh, why? Because of Alexa Bliss. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I always get one when she does her scary thing. I don't think she did the super scary thing though this week. It went from it like coming out of her mouth. Fun. Oh, that point. Yeah. Yeah, that was just weird. Wasn't that scary? In uh, part two, am I wrongly getting my hopes up for a Ripley Bliss feud and Ripley somehow joins the fun house? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're getting yeah. it. Yeah. That's not going to happen. No. Uh, Michael Bedston, what are the odds Jerry writes his own jokes or comes up with them on the spot while calling matches? Is it also a bad thing that done actually make me laugh? Jerry? Michael, I don't know what you're talking about, but uh, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate the question. I, I mean, I, I doubt Jerry comes up with his own jokes. I mean, I'm sure he's got Vince screaming in his ear. And if he was telling was his Jerry own Lawler jokes, on a lot. Tom Jerry at the Rumble? Yeah, for the Rumble nope. match. Oh, yeah. for the Rumble match? Yeah. Okay. It's like, I think that's when they bring him in now is for the Rumble match. No, Jerry comes up with his own jokes. You know that they're his. It has to be his. Probably. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Maybe because uh, no one else talks like him. Everyone on commentary has to talk like the same exact way, pretty much, because that's how Vince wants it. Yeah. Uh, Steven Kochanowski, what's your favorite post Rumble Raw moment of all time? Um, I'd have to remember some. I don't know. It's hard because it's not like it's Mania Rumble. I mean, the right. Raw. I know. Yeah. I think it was like the Raw right after a Rumble when the Taker won, when Undertaker won. Uh -huh. Yeah, and they had like Cena, Lashley, and Batista. Batista come out and stand, and he just like looked each of them up and down, then went like that to Batista, and yeah. it's like, oh, that's who he's gonna fight. That's cool. Yeah, uh, Joe Guerrero, how would you feel if Raw got extended to four hours and SmackDown went away? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's like I, good. And bad. I mean, it's nice having like a four day break in between them. Right. One less hour you have to watch. Yeah. True. Yeah, that's probably. Long, that's a long four hours. One less. It is. And you have one day to do it. Yeah. Uh, if you had an accent or an ethnic, ethnic background, can Vince only cast you as a stereotype? Yes. Yes. Uh, Drew yeah. shit, fake sword, and kilt is grim. I kind of like it. Um, yeah. He says, is it only a matter of time before Mustafa Ali is playing a suicide bomber? I mean, he's halfway there. It kind of is. I mean, they were terrorists. They were terrorists. <laughs> now, they, now they're nice. At least they're nice. nice. <laughs> now they listen. <laughs> Don't interfere in the Royal Rumble. Don't, let's now, now, now they're nice terrorists. Right. Morris Lombardi, Carlito's back. Morrison's back. Edge is back. How long do we see Primo, Mercury, or Christian again? Well, if you watch the Rumble, you know, you would have seen Christian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Wood back, apparently. The Woodster, not a question, but my roommate. Um, might... I don't... Christian's the only one that we could see anytime soon. Yeah, I think it was a joke question, but I mean, Primo? Yeah. No way. The Woodster, not a question, but my roommate and I died at Cuck Graves calling Bad Bunny Mr. Bunny. Mm. I didn't catch that. I guess that yeah. was at the mumble. 
Uh, Jaden Theodore was listening to another wrestling podcast recap about the Rumble, and they literally said, this might be the best Royal Rumble of all time. This is why I stick to you guys. A show with no crowd, a botch fest women's Rumble match, and a complete fuck up at the end of Roman of Roman's match. This is the greatest show! Not bad. <clears throat> Not bad. <laughs> uh, Zaheen Rahman, how did Shayna get uh, to punch Billy Kay's resume before entering the Rumble? I thought WWE banned unprotected headshots. But um, hey, yeah, wanks for banks. How long before Carlito is allowed to spit in people's faces again? Might be a while. Oh, right, because of COVID. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, That's why you can't do that, right? Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, Keith Hoffman. So they've that's, really that's like his whole gimmick too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Keith Hoffman. So they really have ruined Oscar to the point of no return. Also, what's the goal for a new soundboard? Everyone should just raise their Patreon account by one level for a month to help pay for it. Hmm. We need room for all these new quotes that WWE keeps gifting the show. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So everyone listening, just raise your tier one month. Thank you. Uh, ran the man any chance WWE will use Riddle's post-match amnesia as an opportunity for him to forget what an idiot he's been lately, and his last memory could be him calling out Goldberg. No, he's <laughs> he's the new R Truth, basically. I know, but if they were to do that, sure, that'd be yeah. great. Something different with him right now. Anything, yeah. Jason. Yeah. Well, they they might sacrifice him to Goldberg at some point because Goldberg's going to have to come back and beat him the match. Yeah. yeah. Jason Claver, update number six. I was late to submit my comment last week, but I made it to Rumble 97 when Stone Cold won his first, and it hyped me so much for this year's Rumble. Needless to say, it was vastly inferior. Also, <laughs> WCW still feels meh. Yeah. That was a great Rumble with Stone Cold. They had a lot of technical issues for that Rumble, but... Yeah. And, like, half the guys were, like, people you've never heard of or saw ever again. Right. Yeah. But fake diesel and fake razor were in it. It was <laughs> like diesel in the final four. Big diesel was in the final four. It was like, like oh my god. god. Jeez. Move on. Uh pop culture junkie. What will the Valentine's Day plans be for Ric Flair and Lacey Evans? Oh god. They'll probably have oh. a dinner. They'll probably do like a dinner. Lots of, will come in in and lots of like, drinking. A live a live sex dinner. <laughs> Rick, what about your what about your wife, Rick? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> she shows up. He's like, "Who are you?" <laughs> you came just in time for the threesome. <laughs> you came just in time for me to came. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chris Chubb was the Rumble really that boring? That Michael Cole had to start wishing various ex superstars happy birthday. Idiot. Did he do that? I didn't notice. Yes. I didn't even notice that. Huh. Oh, man. Yes. Uh, Joel Hansen, I just wanted to say thanks for the Royal Rumble watch along. I was there beginning to end, and I must say watching with you guys was absolutely the best uh, thing about the whole pay-per-view. I hope to do it again. Thanks. Yeah, it was fun. Anyone that uh, watched the live stream with us, it was kind of a last-minute thing. Uh, we didn't get to announce it on the podcast ahead of time, but maybe yeah. we'll next time. Yeah. Get up more people. yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Ronnie Screamer, uh, guys, thanks for getting me through some tough times recently. It's been invaluable. My question is, how many more times will we see Kevin Owens be screwed out of what he deserves at yeah. the hands of one of the most anticipated yet underwhelming heel turns of all time? Hashtag fuck off Roman. Mm. Can't argue with He'll that. He'll probably get one more match. Yeah. Against Roman? Yeah. That's what they do. Five uh, straight pay-per-views. Yeah. Blech. Right, uh, Michael Haw. Sorry to plug another podcast, but uh, Andrew got me hooked on how did this get made, and I just listened to their No Holds Barred review. Hilarious. Yeah. Do you still listen to it? Uh, I don't because they've gotten like too mainstream in terms of Hollywood, so they can't make fun of any like Hollywood movies anymore. They have to like pick really old and obscure movies now. Yeah. Um. But how did this get made? It was like kind of the inspiration for this podcast. So yeah, yeah. Kind of a shout out from me because uh, it was really funny. 
Uh, rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle. In five years, when WWE runs out of old timers, will they even, uh, inevitably die off? They just might. Hmm. They just might. Depends who dies first, the old timers or Vince. That's the uh, right. The real key there. For sure. And then uh, Hans, the Mole Man Hart. Oh. Bushfire Barry, <laughs> Damian Priest Stables. The new brood with Edge and Christian. Ooh, not bad. The new Ministry of Darkness with Alistair Black, Demon Balor, and Nikki Cross. That's good. Or Priest replaces Ali as leader of Retribution. Okay, I think we know the fire is easy. That's Retrib- yeah. Retribution. I would push the, uh, the Ministry. Oh, I'd push the new brood. Yeah, I'm a brood. We never yeah. got we never got the brood. Like it was there for a few months and then it was gone forever. But right. it was like Gangrel was older, taking two younger guys under his wing. It'd be weird for two older guys to take a young one younger guy under their It'd wing. It'd be fun though. It'd be fun. Who cares? It'd be fun. Yeah. Be the brood. Sure, the brood. sure. Yeah. <laughs> cup of cup of blood and everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Dousing guys with <laughs> blood. Be great. All right. So that is all for fan questions. So make sure you subscribe to our podcast. Give us a five star review. Check out our official website. That's ten stars. That's that's ten. St- Give it ten stars if possible. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, check out our website. What's wrong with wrestling.com. Like the show on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Wrong Wrestling. Get a T-shirt at prowrestlingtees.com slash What's Wrong with Wrestling, and uh, support our show on Patreon.com slash What's Wrong with Wrestling. Again, that's where you can get all. The Wednesday Night War recaps, all the pay-per-view recaps, the brackets, the movies, everything. It's all on there for just $5. So much content. So much. Give it a try. Let us know what you think. And we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Just a troll. What's wrong?